Now let's look at the graph of rate of reaction against pH, which generally has a symmetrical shape. Thank goodness. Every enzyme has its own specific optimal pH at which its rate of enzymatic reaction is the highest, represented by the peak. This makes sense because enzymes are deployed to work in very different environments. Enzymes in your stomach, for example, for digestion, must work at low pHs due to the acid, while enzymes in other parts of your body, for example, will want to work at a relatively neutral pH. As the pH of the environment moves towards the optimal pH of the enzyme, the rate of the reaction increases. That seems obvious. As the pH moves away from the optimal pH, the rate of reaction falls because the excess H plus ions from the acidic environments or OH minus ions from the alkaline environments will affect the charge or ionization of the R groups or residues of its residues at the active site. A few checkpoints back, we discussed about the different residues at the active site, structural, catalytic, and contact residues. The H plus or OH minus ions form ionic bonds, preferentially with the charged R groups of structural residues and disrupt intramolecular ionic bonds, changing the active site's 3D conformation and making it, making it no longer complementary to the substrate. In short, when important residues are altered, function or structure is modified and hence the enzyme will just not work. For contact and catalytic residues, they may require charges in order to form weak ionic bonds with the substrate to allow binding. Alkaline pH will cause positively charged R groups to lose their charge, and acidic pH will cause negatively charged R groups to lose their charge due to acid-base neutralization. The enzyme can no longer carry out the enzymatic reaction, and the rate of reaction decreases.